Hi there, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, I'd like to give you a walk around of our Wheel Horse 3128. We primarily use this as a pulling tractor. This tractor pulls this trailer and we fill this trailer up primarily with uh, horse manure when we're cleaning out paddocks and our pastures. But you've also seen me throw rocks in there as well as sand and gravel. And this wheel horse is the perfect tractor for pulling really heavy loads. Let's take a closer look at it. So this wheel horse is from the early 90s and it's actually a Toro made wheel horse. I believe this one is from uh, roughly between 1991 and 1993. It is uh, the same exact as the original wheel horse 3128 that I believe came out in uh, the early 80s back before Toro bought the brand. So the model number 3128, the 3 stands for 300 series, the 12 stands for a 12 horsepower engine, and the 8 stands for an 8 speed manual gear transmission. Let's start at the front. This wheel horse has the older styled halogen headlights that were found on a lot of uh, older automobiles as well. This uh, nose design is of the newer nose design that Wheel Horse came out. It kind of reminds me of a chess piece. When I first got this tractor and worked on it, I didn't like the profile of the nose, but it has grown on me. It kind of looks cool. Coming to the engine, the engine is a Kohler Magnum 12. It's a 12 horsepower engine. This engine is almost the same engine as the K301 12 horsepower engine uh, with a few differences. So the blocks are identical, but the difference is this actually uses an electronic magneto ignition system instead of uh, a battery ignition system like in the K series. What that means is uh, there are magnets around the flywheel and as this is spinning it induces electricity in uh, this ignition coil that sits up here. It's kind of like on more modern engines. Uh, and then there's a kill switch that leads to your ignition switch that turns it off. So this does not not use points and condensers. You'll never have to replace it. It's a very, very reliable system. You don't have to mess with timing or anything like that. It's great. And this this engine is also equipped with an oil sentry, which is down here. It's a little float that sits in the oil pan, and if your oil level drops to a certain level, it grounds out your ignition module here, and it prevents the engine from running. So that is a, it's a great safety feature. That way, if you uh, don't check your oil and it runs low, you don't have to worry about running this tractor out of oil. Now let's lift up the hood. I like on this tractor how it has these hood latches. On other tractors like my Cup Cadet 149, the hood just kind of sits loose on the tractor and it kind of rattles a little bit when you're using it and that rattling can get annoying after several hours of use here. So I like how this hood just flips up and it latches right here. It's a nice setup. Uh, this tractor has a fuse box, which makes it handy to uh, change the fuses and protect your electrical systems. It uses a mechanical fuel pump, so this is the fuel filter for that. Let's take a look at the steering components. Now this steering is like a rack and pinion type. So what it is is it's two gears that mesh together see if I can get it so you can see there it is so when you turn the wheel the shaft that the wheel is connected to actually has gears directly on it and then it turns this this bigger gear that's in the foreground here that I'm pointing to it turns it side to side and then that gear is connected to this shaft and it comes down and it connects to the tie rods right here so when you turn the wheel this uh, bracket here is going left and right, and that's what's turning these two tie rods right here. Now in my channel, you'll see that I like uh, front end loaders and other attachments for these tractors. I fabricate a lot of that stuff here, and some people might wonder, is a Wheel Horse 3128 a good candidate for mounting a front end loader too? Well, uh, 
It is, with a few changes. So one, it has a gear drive, so you'll have to know that moving back and forth with a loader will be a little bit more tricky, because you've got to shift the gears manually and then use your same hand to operate the front end loader. So that might slow you down a little bit. Another thing is, this uh, steering system is more apt to wear over time than the steering system on, say, a Cub Cadet that uses a Ross kind of worm gear style steering. So you might have to, uh, weld those teeth over time, they might round off. Also, the spindles on these are not as strong or as beefy as others. As you can see, it is just a single rod or round steel that's kind of bent at an angle and stuck in here. If you were to use this for a front end loader, I'd recommend uh, beefing this up by adding a gusset uh, and then perhaps making the spindles one inch and then mounting uh, actual trailer hubs to this instead. Other than that, the axle is cast iron, the frame is strong enough, everything else is strong enough, the transmission is more than strong enough, but the spindles and the steering are the weakest link if you want to put a front end loader on this. So this is the dash control. I'm missing the, the center cap for the steering wheel. I'm still trying to find one. So all the switches here, so this one is for the headlights, this is your choke, this is a little uh, information panel here. Uh, back when it did have a seat switch, this seat switch would light up if you weren't sitting on it. Uh, the parking safety switch is still there, so in order to start it, you have to push the parking brake, and then it also reminds you to push on the clutch pedal to start it, and then if your PTO clutch is on, it won't start either, and then that light will come on. If your engine, if your oil sentry does turn on, uh, this engine oil light will come on, letting you know that the reason your engine is not starting is because you have low oil. Here's an hour meter, and this is a battery amp meter. This is your throttle over here. This is your parking brake. This is your deck lower and raise. And this lever right here is your actual lift lever. So this one sets uh, the height, like your lowest height. These are the shift knobs for the transmission. So this is an eight speed. So what that means is it has a, a first, second, third gear and reverse and a high and low. So you can have first gear high or first gear low, that's two speeds, second gear high or low, third gear high or low, or reverse gear high or low. Now this transmission, I'm going to show you from behind, it's a Unidrive transmission. Now this was uh, one of the original transmissions that Elmer Pond uh, designed. He was the founder of Wheel Horse. And it is a robust transmission. It's a sliding gear transmission, meaning when you turn these shift knobs, it's actually pushing the gears inside uh, to their proper position. And I have some information here from the Wheel Horse uh, Unidrive uh, manual. And check this out, look at the ratios on this thing. So, let me get this in focus. The first gear ratio in high gear has a 66.8 to one. That means that input gear will turn 66.8 times for every turn of that output to the wheels. And look at it in low range, 267.2 to one. That is an incredible amount of torque that this thing is capable of putting out. That's pretty impressive. The only thing that limits this really is the weight of the tractor. Stock, this tractor only weighs about 610 pounds according to tractordata.com. So if you were to really weigh this down, you'd be able to get lots of pulling power and torque. Now the seat uh, slides back and forth. There's a little lever right here so you can adjust the position. It also lifts up so you can access the fuel tank as well as the transmission dipstick which is down in the bottom of this hole. I probably cannot get that in focus. The transmission just takes uh, gear oil. I don't know off the top of my head what the weight is. I have, uh, I have all the information written down in my shop. Now these tires right here are uh, 23 by 10 and a half by 12. These tires are actually too wide for this tractor technically. Originally this came with 23 by 8 by 12. So it was only 8 inches wide uh, versus 12 inches wide. Or 10 and a half inches wide, I'm sorry. As you can see right here, if I show you, the tire right here 
is actually rubbing slightly on the frame. And there's a shiny part on my tire right along here, a little ridge. Uh, the original tires that came with this were in very poor condition, so I took these tires off of uh, out of my junkyard in the back and put them on here. And they do the trick, even though they're a little wide. I have here this special hitch that I got on eBay. I don't remember the username. I'll have to look it up and I will put it in the description. So if you like it, you can get it. But it's cool. It has a two inch uh, receiver so I can attach uh, ball hitches or anything else that is on a, that uses a two inch receiver on here. And it also has this little uh, part right here so I can hook up trailer carts and lawnmower carts via just this uh, five eighths inch pin here. So that comes in really handy. Now originally it's supposed to just sit on here, this hitch, onto the original wheel horse hitch in the back. And that's a lot of weight on this little piece of steel. It's not a little piece of steel, it's like a half inch thick piece of steel. So to help offset some of the stress that it would take, I wrapped this chain around it and I put it around the steel part of the frame here, just to give it a little bit more rigidity. Now I've loaded this trailer up with huge rocks, really, really full. Uh, you've seen it in our backhoe digging rocks video. I don't know how much it weighs, but this trailer must weigh over 500 pounds when I fill it up with rocks. And this uh, hitch setup that I have and this tractor pulls it without issue. Now one of the unique things to this wheel horse tractor, we'll come to this side, is this sideways engine and their PTO setup. Now they have the engine turned to the side and it makes servicing it very easy. Instead of having a forward facing engine like on the Fords and the Cub Cadets where it uses a shaft, uh, if you ever had to take the engine off or service the shaft or transmission, you have to reach your hand into the center or get underneath and it's really cramped. But since this engine is on the side, the drive belt actually runs from here behind this cover and to the transmission. Let's see if I can get it on video for you. What you're looking at straight ahead is uh, the clutch pulley, and I can't quite get a shot. Oh, there it is. There's the transmission pulley right there. So in order to service this, this belt, you would take this side cover off, and then you would take this footrest off, and you can pull the whole belt off, work on the pulleys, do everything. It's very easy. You don't have to get under it. You don't have to reach your hand into tight places. It makes it... Uh, it makes it perfect for this sort of application. Now here is the PTO clutch. What this is, is there's this drum that spins freely, and then when you pull the PTO clutch lever right here, watch what it does. It pulls it, it pulls it closer. This part compresses and it pushes this pulley to the engine, so now it is tight. And it squeezes it to this friction material that's mounted on the engine's crankshaft. And this PTO pulley will pull, will turn all of your implements, whether it's a snowblower or a lawnmower. And we'll get to how that sets up in a moment. Let me turn this, close this hood for us. So these wheel horses, starting in 1975 up to the final years that the wheel horse was made, it used something called the Attach-O-Matic Attachment System. It was a no-tool, quick-attach method of attaching your implements, whether it was a snow plow, a snow blower, or a lawn mower. And what would happen is on the front part, this is where, in the case of a lawn mower, you would put your mule drive. You connect your mule drive right to this, it snaps into place, you turn this lever to lock it in, and this belt will run from the PTO down here kind of diagonally and then it will connect to the mule drive and then from the mule drive the belt will be routed to your mower deck and you would mount your mower deck to this center part right here and that's all it would take you slide your mower deck underneath you attach this in you lock it in place and then you're good to go it was a very quick and easy system of doing that so that's why a lot of wheel horse lovers love wheel horse and all the attachments for the attach o -matic, ranging from the mid-1970s all the way up to the 90s when wheel horse was still being made would work on each tractor. They were all interchangeable. So a mower deck from another wheel horse in the 1980s that used the attach o -matic system would work on this wheel horse. Pretty cool. So I think I covered everything. 
that I wanted to talk about. Here is the Wheel Horse 3128. If you're thinking about getting a Wheel Horse for your restoration project, this is a great tractor. Uh, I do have the mower deck for this, and in a future video, I'll show you how the attachment, the attachomatic works, and I'll install it for you. But these tractors are great. They're easy to work on. They're very simple. It's kind of an, an engine on frame design, so it's really easy to pull that engine out. It's really easy to take the transmission off. Uh, this is a great project if you're looking to restore an old garden tractor. If I missed anything and you have any other questions, please comment below. My name is Norman with isavetractors.com, and I'll see you next time.